Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. We're in the sports section. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's revisit for a moment a fight that took place last weekend that I think is a major fight. Right, I think this is something you really need to keep your eye on. It's very exciting. Figuratively speaking, it's boxing on steroids. And make no mistake, the guys in the ring are boxing. The sport is a bit different, right? It's big knockout boxing. But the combatants are boxing. This is not MMA, right? The skills translate at least some of them. I'm talking about last weekend's middleweight championship bout between Gabe Rosado, who's now the middleweight champion for BKB, Big Knockout Boxing, and he beat Brian Vera. Now you may recall in Vera's first fight against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., Vera gave Chavez Jr. all he could handle to the point where the guys ended up agreeing to a rematch, which got very high ratings, right? Because boxing fans understood that Vera was a legitimate competitor for Chavez Jr., who used to hold the middleweight title, right? Who, as I make this video, has only lost once. That was to Sergio Martinez in a fight in which he dropped Sergio Martinez in the 12th round. Martinez got up, got a well-earned decision. The point, though, is Chavez Jr. is a world-class fighter. Brian Vera gave him all he could handle. Now, these guys were fighting for the middleweight title, right? Uh, just a few points. Something I overlooked. Now, I didn't make a pre-fight video, but I'm just sharing a private story, right? I should have added everything together and realized that Brian Vera fought Chavez Jr. in their second fight at a weight well above 160 pounds, right? One of the things that gamblers need to look at in figuring out who to pick in a fight is the age of the fighter coupled with the weight at which they last fought, right? Because older fighters have a hard time dropping weight, dropping back down. And it was clear to me that Brian Vera looked a little bit drained in this fight. Don't get me wrong, he still had his moments, right? He drops Gabe Rosado in the fight, right? Gabe Rosado wins the fight by dropping him twice. It was that action-packed, and understand the format of the sport is such that it lends itself to action-packed fights. But for me personally, and Gabe Rosado was landing a nice straight right hand throughout the fight. He hits harder than Brian Vera. I thought a straight right hand was really the difference in the fight. Right, He also seemed to have a hand speed advantage that allowed him to showboat at times. In other words, he figured out that his reflexes were a little bit better than Brian Vera's. The fight's really fascinating, though, because in my opinion, Brian Vera is the more skilled fighter. Right, You'll notice Brian Vera, even in this format, where there are no ropes, right, where you're in a smaller area than a normal size 20 by 20 ring, right? In this format, you'll notice that Brian Vera starts to time Gabe Rosado to the point where he's able to drop his hands a bit, even in this format, right? It'd be interesting to see who would win with traditional rules, right? I think Brian Vera, who clearly lost this fight, I'm not saying he won the fight. He was in no shape to continue, in my opinion, after the second knockdown. But I thought boxing-wise, Brian Vera 
was probably the savvier fighter. But I thought Gabe Rosado was the bigger hitter and the better athlete. Right? So it was a fascinating fight. But the reason why I recommend that everyone look at the fight, and it's up on YouTube, is because of the impact the different rules have on the games of the fighters. Right? The sports and I opener because understand you know those moments in fights particularly Floyd Mayweather fights where one fighter will go over to the ropes and will be able to take breathers leaning on the ropes and can mainly be defensive over by the ropes right that part of the sport is eliminated here because there are no ropes right there literally is no place to hide and so these guys were in the middle of the ring duking it out right if you get dazed what are you gonna do right you don't even have the room to move around right by the way there are no corners you're in a circle they call it a pit really it is more of a boxing ring than the square we call a ring in traditional boxing. Right? And so this fight was interesting. I believe it's going to open the door toward the development of skills by the fighters that we haven't seen in traditional boxing because now guys are going to have to develop a technique. It's still early. Right? This, these things will develop over time, but guys will have to develop a technique on what to do to protect themselves when they're hurt and there are no rings, no ropes to lean on. Right? You know, a George Foreman would practically be unbeatable in this format. Right? The rumble in the jungle against Ali, where Ali is roping rope-a-doping, right, over by the ropes wouldn't happen in this sport. Let me also point out that front foot heavy guys, guys like Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., would practically be unbeatable in this sport, right? Because he's big, he comes forward, he hunts you down, an opponent would have a hard time duplicating what Sergio Martinez did in the traditional sport, right? Because it's a smaller area, right? A Janady Golovkin would be interesting here, right? Because Golovkin is front foot heavy. This sport favors stalkers, right? Gabe Rosado has had a problem in traditional boxing dealing with slick fighters. Right? It's unclear because of the newness of this sport whether he would have that problem in this format. Right? Let me point out, too, that there are certain fighters, Saul Alvarez, big hitter, who looks bad when you're dealing with three minute rounds. Right? You know, I'm a critic of Saul Alvarez's stamina. Right? When you're dealing with three-minute rounds, I think Saul Alvarez wilts a little bit. When you're dealing with movers, I think Saul Alvarez wilts a little bit. Right? He doesn't quite have the foot speed to keep up with an Arislandi Lara. Right? And critics like me don't believe he won that Lara fight. But in this format, understand, Lara would have less room to move around. In this format, understand, Saul Alvarez would only have to fight for two minutes, not three minutes, right? In this format, a guy couldn't bounce off the ropes, rest his legs, while countering Alvarez like Floyd Mayweather did in several rounds against Saul Alvarez. Right? If I were a traditional boxer, 
with the skill sets of, let's say, a Chavez Jr. or a Saul Alvarez or a Gennady Golovkin or a James Kirkland. Another guy who's front foot heavy, who almost always pins opponents on the ropes. Didn't Kirkland even have Alfredo and Gulo up on the ropes? Right, think about it. Here, Kirkland would be in your face by the side of the pit, they call it, and you'd have nowhere to go. You wouldn't even have the ropes to lean on. I believe those guys need to consider at least venturing into this format for a fight or two. Right, a Gennady Golovkin fight against Gabe Rosado would be fascinating, both from an action perspective, right? These guys would be practically fighting in a phone booth. And also from a historical perspective, because Golovkin already holds one of the middleweight belts in traditional boxing. He could try to annex the BKB belt, right? So count me among those who, quite frankly, will be back at the table watching future BKB events. No knock on UFC. No knock on MMA, right? I'll say I have a profound respect for MMA, but I'm a boxing guy, right? I like some traditional rules. This new format, coupled with the traditional boxing rules, right? It's still boxing. The guys are still wearing gloves, right? They're not hitting you with a bare hand, right? The fighters spend the fight upright, not on the floor like they do in some of these MMA matches. This, quite frankly, BKB, excited me, right? So I hope you just YouTube... The Gabe Rosado Brian verified. It's worth a second look. It really is an eye opener. The production was top notch. As I said, Michael Buffer was the ring announcer. Kenny Bayless was the referee. In other words, you had A level guys who you normally see at the biggest fights in boxing, and they were here at this fight. So give it a look. I think it's worthwhile. Just understand that this sport, because of the rule changes, shorter rounds, no ropes, shorter fighting area, smaller fighting area, favors a different group of fighters than the rules favor in traditional boxing, right? Front foot heavy guys really have a chance to catch up with their opponents and dominate in this format. Right? I mean, you know, Joe Lewis in traditional boxing once said about Billy Kahn, he can run, but he can't hide. That saying is especially true in big knockout boxing. I believe it's worth a look. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.